Hey, what's up, YouTube? I just wanted to uh, throw a quick video up about uh, how to mix the Fox Farms nutrients. Uh, this is just the lineup I'm going to use right now. I do have a few others. Uh, basically, got their whole lineup. Great, great way to uh, help your plants out. Uh, so we got all our necessities. We got our pH right there. We got the micronutrient. We got the uh, nitrogen. We got the uh, microbrew and the kangaroo roots, which normally you don't uh, use together, um, according to our schedule right here that we got. Uh, I'm going to be doing three for the plants that I have right now, which is going to be this line right here. So as you see, we got uh, six teaspoons of Big Bloom, three teaspoons Grow Big, Flower Kiss I have, however I'm not using this, just an application which you just put in a uh, squirt bottle, like so, and then uh, just spray it, spray it on in foil, foilage. Uh, so yeah, uh, as you see right here too, uh, it requires kangaroots and microbrew prior. It's the only time you'll ever see it on this whole list uh, that you put them together. But I just transplanted, so I'm going to go ahead and throw it in there with it just to give it everything it needs. Sorry the camera's so wobbly. Uh, so here we go. Uh, first thing I'm going to start off with is our cow mag because I have a reverse osmosis machine. Uh, it takes basically every everything out of it, all the parts per millions. Um, it doesn't pH it. Um, it's actually a little harsh pH. It's a little higher, but it's very easily uh, influenced. Uh, if you put like basically any pH up or a pH down uh, into reverse osmosis water, you're going to end up very high on whatever you whatever you put in, either very very low or very high, I should say. So anyway, here we go. <clears throat> this you just have to read on the back uh, it only requires uh, I think a teaspoon per gallon and these are gallon jugs so we're just gonna go ahead and measure out one of them and there she is and then we just go ahead and dump it in easy enough right and then uh, what I like to do is I like to take my squirt bottle and just squirt this cup out into uh, the container after I've done all four of them. So I'm gonna do that real quick. All right, I got those poured. So the next thing I like to do is just go ahead and put the cap on and uh, put it inside your bucket here. Make sure you shake up all your nutrients before uh, before you put them in, especially, especially these guys right here. Um, and if you're flowering, this guy right here. Um, because they're all natural, so uh, it's a bunch of poops and stuff like that, just with water, essentially. Uh, so you just gotta really mix those things up. Next, uh, normally you'd shake this up. However, uh, I don't find it really too necessary. Sometimes I might just throw in some Sea Cure first before I put the micronutrient in, uh, just so I could shake this up. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. This is just great for leaves. Uh, it gives them really green, uh, green luscious leaves. All you gotta do is a little bit too. Just a couple little squirties is all you need. And then, the easiest way, I think, is these one gallon containers because to shake these up, all you gotta do is just quick shake. Done. Go ahead and do that to the rest of them. Okay, we got those shook up. Take off those tops real quick. Next, um, you put the micronutrient. I'm pretty sure it's uh, kind of important how you do the order, just because of the whole chemical bonds and uh, how the science behind it all works. Open bonds will close. Definitely if you don't shake. Um, and then they just can't get absorbed by your plants, basically. Um, so, go back to our little measuring cup here. These are actually really great. I got a bunch of them for like fucking $5 or something like that. Just to, And you only use one for like a year or something like that. So, I mean, you got them forever. 
So it required six teaspoons. This is one of the ones you shake up. And you sit there and just vigorously shake this thing. So now we're going to go ahead and measure out six teaspoons, which is two tablespoons, which is the whole cup basically right here. So something like that, like so, dump her in, do it to the rest of them, shake them up, do the rest. Now we move on to our nitrogen which is the grow big make sure you shake this one up too really good crystals will form and then measurements get all off towards the end of the bottle it's another bad thing about not shaking or if you let them sit for too long i guess too if you don't use them fast enough anything all right so now required according to our table we're still going off of right here requires three teaspoons boom blap just like so throw her in rinse out the cup do it to the rest of them shake them up you're probably starting to catch the sequence by now next we're gonna move on to our micro brew shake them up our chart requires 0 0.5 half a table half a teaspoon. So we got our little cup still. Measure out the half teaspoon. I mean you could give or take really for this kind of stuff. It doesn't matter if you put I mean even a even a teaspoon, I mean, but you're just kind of wasting wasting your nutrients here because the plant can only absorb so much. Uh, what it needs is the nutrients and the water and whatnot. Then it needs the sun. Then it needs the uh, carbon dioxide. Um, the roots actually also need oxygen, um, which is great if you have hydroponics or um, uh, the uh, bags made out of like cloth material, those really help the plants breathe. <clears throat> but if you give it a lot of the nutrients and everything and you don't have enough carbon dioxide and enough light to equal it out, all that nutrients just gets wasted. So I mean it only takes in an equal proportion of each. So anyway, back to this. So we're going to go ahead and we dump that in. Next we're going to do it to the rest of them and shake them up. Alright, we got all those all shook up. Did it seek here? Next, we're gonna move to our kangaroo. Shake them up, really nice. This you only put <clears throat> a half a teaspoon as well. Measure them out. That was pretty far off on the camera view. And go ahead and dump her in. Do that to the rest of them, and then shake them up. All right. That's ev that's everything right there. Now we're now we're gonna get onto our pH. -ing. We got our little stick right here. On average, this is always below. Uh, you want anywhere from 6.3 to 6.8 pH. Uh, this ends up being about like 5.6, maybe 5.5 five or something like that. Pretty pretty low on average. Um, so I always just keep the keep the up out. You'll notice there's a uh, there's an average with how these things go as well. Um, as I said, <clears throat> I use reverse osmosis water, uh, which is less parts per million, I'm sure most of you know, than uh, tap water. If you're in the city, uh, it won't be too bad. You'll have, you know, probably even pH'd water already. Um, so it might be a little bit different than how I'm doing mine. Because mine goes through a charcoal filter, I believe, and a couple other, I think it's a four stage filter. Uh, I have another video on it if you want to look at that. Um, so yeah, you just go ahead and put a little bit of the pH up in these and good to go. Um, on average, it's probably about, 
maybe for for the vegetation it's about one and a half tablespoons um, to get it all pH'd. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and just we got our cup that we've been cleaning out spray out with the uh, spray bottle go ahead and shake it up all I use is baking soda and water. I use two tablespoons um, and then I just fill up uh, the rest of the jug with water and it works perfectly. That's all natural. I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure what most pH uh, companies use for their pH up or down. I'm sure it's the same thing that most people would use like vinegar and baking soda. Uh, vinegar to lower, baking soda to, to raise it up. Both of them are uh, organic sources, or I mean, at least come from the earth, so I mean, they're not man-made. So, next, we're going to go ahead and put the one and a half. There she is. As I said, you want to get anywhere from 6.3 to 6.8 on this. Let's see if I can't just spray that out like that. All right, and then we shake them up. I recommend just doing one at a time so you don't throw something uh, in all of these and then you have to pH down it or whatever, you know, because all these are going to be about the same because you put the same amount in every one. Um, so you turn your little pH stick on. So you can see it's going sporadic because that's what it does when you start it. And then all I do is I kind of, it's going to be hard, you kind of just push on this jug a little bit. Like so, until it reaches the bottom of the stick. We've got 6.4. And you kind of just swirl the water, just kind of push the thing up and down. Or in and out. And we got 6.5, so... It's basically perfect right there, right in between 6.3 and 6.8. We're going to go with it. So what we're going to do next, go ahead and take our cup and fill it up with one and a half uh, tablespoons. And do it to these other three and put the caps on them, shake them up, and go put them on the plants. Um, once again, make sure you go off your schedule. Um, say you're flowering you know you're going to be using these um which obviously you put if you if you use them uh, the boosters down here which i've had amazing results with um yeah like i said this was a video basically for stage three right here with the six um as soon as i turn them turn them on then you're going to start with these uh so yeah, hope this video helped anybody out. Uh, as you see in the back, I use a soilless mix with uh, perlite. Uh, I like to do about 60, 40, maybe even 70, 30. 70% um, perlite, I mean 70% pro mix. Um, all right, well yeah, uh, check out the other videos. Uh, hopefully I'll be posting more. Take it easy, guys.